Hi friends, welcome again in this new video, third video based on basic concepts. In the last two videos, we started the unit. We have seen, uh, in the last video, we have seen the Kirchhoff's voltage law and current law. And that one is the important. We have seen the linear circuit, non-linear circuit. And we have seen the graph for that particular uh, linear and non-linear circuit, VI characteristics of the circuit. We have seen nodal analysis and male analysis, mesh analysis. Today, we are going to start some numericals based on KCL and KVL, how to solve, how to get the answers. Here we go, we are having, the problem is given, apply the node and mesh analysis and find out the different voltages and currents for both the circuits. Okay, so I am having two circuits, two, eight, four, 5 and minus 3 ok so on the fresh page I am taking this it's 2 it's 4 it's ohm ok This one is 5, this one is minus 3. Yeah, it's both. Okay. Now the question is we have to identify or we have to apply KCL and KVL means we have to apply node analysis and mesh analysis and we have to find out the voltage current and voltages in the different branches of the circuit sorry so Firstly, I am going to apply node analysis. First, I will solve the circuit for the node analysis. We are having two methods. By any method, we can solve the circuit. Okay. So, first I will show you how to solve the circuit by node analysis. The first step was to identify number of nodes first. Here, we are having two nodes. Is it clear to you? How many nodes we have here? We are having two nodes, node A and node B. Okay. In the second step, we have to ground one node. Yes, this is by default ground node. Okay. This is grounded. Means voltage across B is nothing but the zero volt. Assign the voltage. Here I assign the voltage is VA. I hope it's clear to you. Okay, now we identified the number of nodes, we grounded one node, we assigned the voltage to the nodes. Now in the fourth and the last step, we have to no write down the KCL equations. Is it okay to you? Very good. Now KCL at node A. KCL at node A. KCL again is the current equation. And uh, as I told you, the V will be higher than any other voltage existing in the circuit. So we have to write the KCL equation over here. So the V A A node A is connected with three branches. So I'll be having three currents, and the direction of the current will be outgoing always outgoing. Why? Because it's my assumption that V A is at higher potential. So first I'll write for this branch VA up to ground you have to go then you are getting 5 fine and this is the ground over divide by resistances how many resistances we are having only two so two over here is it okay to you people then plus why I'm why I'm taking positive signs because outgoing currents right what about this VA and here 0 
divide by is it correct to you people come here again pose always i'll take the positive signs in node analysis i have to take the positive sign always because by default the currents will be outgoing currents why because this is our assumption that va will be at higher potential that's why in the third one third case the value of current will be uh, va c minus on this outer positive so plus 3 minus 0 divide by 4 equal to 0 in this equation only one unknown is there so I can solve for that take the LCM here LCM is 8 2 4 za so here 4 VA minus 20 plus VA plus 2 VA plus 3 to the 6 equal to 0 is it okay this 8 will go this side okay now 4 VA 5 VA 7 VA 7 VA minus 20 plus 6 minus 14 equal to 0 VA equal to 14 by 7 VA equal to 2 volt are you getting you get the 2 volt now see see after solving the circuit you are getting output 2 volt means the value of this volt VA uh, voltage VA is 2 volt this is 2 volt so can you find out these different currents if this is I1 this is I2 this is I3 now if someone will ask you what is the I1 so you will say I1 is nothing but 2 minus 5 but see the potential is 5 volt is higher than this so obviously the current direction will be this side current direction will be this side so I1 this is the wrong assumption okay but if we will get the output by solving this automatically it will be corrected okay because in our equation the all currents are the outgoing currents but after getting the solution after getting the answer we can easily identify the direction of current see here clearly visible 2 volt is lower than 5 volt so current direction will be I1 so this I1 is 5 minus 2 divide by 2 this is nothing but 1.5 ampere okay friends and the direction of the current is tell me 5 to 2 but suppose sometime in the examination they'll ask they'll given this current already with a direction suppose by default this current is given with this direction I1 but after getting uh, solution of this circuit you are getting 2 volt is the voltage across A and 5 volt is the uh, voltage on this side of the this element okay now you will be having four options one is 1.5 ampere one is minus 1.5 ampere and two others option so you have to choose minus why because they by default give the direction of the current this side but actually the current is coming from the opposite sign that's why for this oppositeness I'm writing minus sign over here I hope you are getting this if by default they are giving the direction in the circuit in the problem so once when we will get the negative direction or opposite direction if from the by default direction opposite from the by default direction so we will write the negative sign if the current is in this direction then no need to worry the same current positive 1.5 but if the current is opposite minus 1.5 I1 is over now come to the I2 come to the I2 2 volt minus 0 volt 2 minus 0 volt divide by 8 1 by 4 0.25 amps is it okay to you people 
come i3 here is the i3 i3 is nothing but 2 minus at the output stage I am getting plus so plus 3 divided by 4 it's 5 by 4 this is the answer 1.25 kind of thing this is your answer overall nodal analysis it's over is it okay to you people now see for the same circuit also by the mesh analysis is it okay to you people the same circuit eight ohm two ohm four ohm here the battery is five volt here the battery is 3 volt. Now my task is to apply KVL means mesh analysis. Mesh analysis means KVL. I hope it's, I hope it's clear to you that how to solve the uh, problems by mesh analysis. Okay. So, as you know, our assumption is first identify number of meshes yes we identified a b with yes the first step i have done i have two meshes the number one mesh is a b e f a a b e f a and the second mesh is B C D E B B C D E B is it clear to you people okay now see uh, the identification of meshes are over secondly assign the mesh currents I am going to assign the current in mesh this is I1 here I am going to assign I2 now direction of the current it depends on you I am choosing this way here I am taking the current same this is I1 this is I2 is it okay to you people now in the third step to write the KVL equation so now apply KVL apply KVL in which mesh mesh first a B E F A this is my first mesh and I'm going to apply the KVL over here so we'll start from the A yes I'll start from the A first the, tell me the voltage drop voltage drop will be like this now because current is flowing in this direction so current flows from higher potential to lower potential so this side the potential will be higher than this side is it okay to you people so, I am getting negative sign at the last, negative sign, the voltage drop here is 2 multiplied with I1, 2I1, correct? Now come to the B, B to E, I am getting 8, so here also the voltage drop will be in this direction, so minus sign 8, tell me the current, I1 is coming from this side, I2 is coming from lower side. And I told you if you are analyzing the mesh 1, so the current linked with that mesh will be higher than any other current in the circuit. So I1 is higher than I2. Why I am subtracting this? Because they are in opposite direction. If the direction of these currents are in same direction, I will add them. Simple. So, okay, we came to the E, now go to the F. At the end, we have to go to the A. Okay, don't leave the analysis up to here only. Now, the output terminal is the positive terminal for 5. So, I am taking positive 5 equal to 0. Now, we can simplify this. 
माइनस टू आई वन माइनस एट आई वन माइनस माइनस प्लस एट आई टू प्लस फाइव इक्वल टू जीरो अगेन वी कैन सिंप्लीफाई दिस विल बिकम माइनस टेन आई वन प्लस एट आई टू प्लस फाइव इक्वल टू जीरो इक्वेशन वन आई होप दिस वन इज द क्लियर टू यू पीपल ओके नाउ नाउ अप्लाई के वी एल इन टेल मी द मेश B C D E B. We are going to start from B and coming to B. The first voltage drop I'm getting across four with a negative sign, and the value of voltage drop is four I two, four I two. Here at the output, output the positive sign, so positive three. Come to the R eight, so minus eight. And the current is I two minus I one. I told you already why. And we came to the B. It is zero. Again, we can rearrange the terms and can simplify the circuit. Plus three minus eight I two plus eight I one equal to zero. Is it okay? Minus four I two minus eight I two. We are having twelve I two plus eight I one. Equal to uh, plus three, equal to zero. This is the equation two. Now see, you are having two equations. Equation one and equation two over here. Wait a minute. Two equations you have. So we can solve two equation two unknown. So I'll get the current values I one and I two. So when we'll solve these two equations, I'll get I one is nothing but uh, minus three by two, and I two is five by minus five by four and something plus five by four. Okay. See, minus three by two means minus one point five ampere. I'm getting. But this minus indicates this minus indicates that the 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 direction of current is different than what you assumed. Is it okay? Okay, I think we we are getting this positive. Both are positives. Okay, so positive means the direction you assume is correct. Means the direction of the current will be from this side only. Okay, see the same problem we have done by the KCL also. In the KCL. We got the value of this voltage here, two volt. Okay, and the value of this current we got five minus two divided by ah uh, two, three by two. We are getting one point five. Here also we are getting one point. So I hope ah uh, KCL and KVL node analysis and mass analysis is clear to you people. And uh, here a homework for you. See this. This is the homework for you. You have to do it by any one of this, either maze analysis or uh, node analysis. Okay. Now see this. Here, one dependent source is given. This is the dependent source. Okay. I'm giving you hint also. You have to write the uh, mesh analysis. Okay. You will apply the mesh analysis. For this equation, we will apply mesh analysis. Okay. For this equation, we will apply mesh analysis. Okay. But when you are going to apply the mesh in this mesh, we are getting the quantity for I naught. For I naught. I naught is another variable. We need three equations and three unknowns. Three variables. So we are having three variables already. I one, I two, I three. Why this unnecessarily I one, I naught is coming? So actually, we can replace this I naught by, in terms of, I one, I two, I three C. Where is this I naught given in the circuit? Here, here it is given in the circuit. Direction of this I naught is, this side. So in this particular branch, how many currents are going? I one is going in this direction, and I two is going in this direction. Is it okay? Say this is the I two. This I two will be in this entire mesh. So I two is coming from this direction. 
the resultant direction of this I2 is lower. It means I1 minus I2. I1 minus I2. So you will replace this I0 by I1 minus I2. So you will be having three equations, three unknown. You have to solve it. In the next slide, I will give the answer for this. Okay. Now, we are having super node and super mesh concepts. Super node and super, sometimes it's uh, very be beneficial uh, for us to solve the circuit actually. The super node says, a super node is formed by enclosing a dependent or voltage source connected between two non-reference voltages. See, you can observe here in the circuit, between these two nodes, this one node, this is another node. Between this node, if I am getting only a voltage source, only an independent source or dependent, whatever. So, I can assume this both node as a super node. What I am telling? If between two non-reference nodes, why I am telling the non-reference node? Because this one is the reference node. Okay, and this definition is applicable for non-reference node. If in between two no non-reference nodes, one independent or dependent source directly connected, so this node we can consider the super node. What I mean, what the super node means? Super node means, when you are going to apply KCL at this node, simultaneously at the same time, you will, you will consider the node V3 also. Is it okay to you people? Means for a while this node 2, node 2 and node 3 will become same like this because of this independent source in between them. Are you getting what I am saying? Okay. An independent voltage source should be there only, not current source. Okay. In between two nodes, if current source is given, then this 1 and 2 are not super node, okay? They are super node if and only if one independent or dependent voltage source is connected in between them. Now, how to solve this actually? The point is how to solve this. See, when I'll apply the KCL or node analysis at this point V2, okay. I'm applying KCL at node V2 or the voltage assign is V2, so consider the node is 2, okay, not down here, V2 minus V1, V1 value is given directly, 10 volt, see, this is the 10 volt connected to ground, so up to the ground, this voltage is directly given to 10 volt, suppose I am here one resistance, R, so now V1 is not 10, because some drop will be there with R, but here in this case, there is a no R, this R is not here, so it, it it's a 10 volt directly, 10 volt. So V2, V2 minus 10 divided by 2. I hope this one is clear. Now V2 minus 0 divided by 8. V2 minus 0 divided by 8. Is it clear? Now what about this branch? No need to write this branch. Directly jump to the V3. Simultaneously, we will write both nodes if they are super node. V3 minus 0 by 6. V3 minus 10, this one. Divide by 4. V3 minus 10, divide by 4. Equal to 0. Is it okay? We are having only one equation and two unknowns we have. We need another equation to get the uh, uh, values of those unknowns. So one equation is given over here also. See, V2 and V3 difference is 5 volt. V2 minus V3 is nothing but 5 volt. This is equation 2. This is equation 1, this one. So again here I am having two unknowns, V2 and V3. So, can I get the values of V2 and V3? Do it now. Find out the value V2 and V3. Do it. I'll tell you later.
So I'll provide the answer to you people within five minutes. Next, see the super mesh concept now. We have seen the super node concept. Now we are having the super mesh concepts. Wait a minute. Now see, in the super node concept between two nodes, non-reference nodes, we are having one independent or dependent voltage source. Here, in between two meshes, we are having one current source. A super mesh results when two meshes have a dependent or independent current source in the common. In the super mesh, the current source will be common here. If such condition occurs in the circuit, so we apply the super mesh concept. Okay, in the super node, we have seen between two nodes A and B, if one independent R dependent source occurs like this. So we consider these two nodes as a super node. Okay, on the same way. If between two meshes we have one independent or dependent current source, then we can apply the uh, super mesh concept. Super mesh concept is now for this to bo uh, see, wait a minute. Now for these two meshes, we can consider only single mesh like this. Okay, see friends, if we are going to study this mesh only, we will write the equation here 6i1. Okay, fine. What about this? In this circuit current 6 is coming from this side. So voltage drop will be uh, 6 is at 12. Okay, fine. Here voltage you get, yes, here you get. But what about this current? Here we have to assume voltage because we don't have the voltage across the current source. Is it? So again we are having uh, another variable. Already you are having two variables i1 and i2. In the equation you are getting another variable v. So how you will solve it? That's why to avoid this condition or uh, to avoid this mess in the mesh, we are going to do super mesh concept. We are going to apply the super mesh concept. Now according to super mesh concepts, we will consider the two meshes as a one. Now, if I'll apply the mesh analysis into this entire circuit, so I'll go this way. Okay, because of this unnecessarily current source, these two meshes are merged and become one. Just like as in the nodal analysis, two nodes was uh, two nodes were merged and become one node, right? Here also similarly. The same situation is there. Now I'm going to apply the KVL in A, B, C, D, E, and F. I'll start from here only. I'm getting drop in this way, and the draw voltage is 6I. Which current is flowing in 6 ohm? I1. Fine. What about 10 ohm? The current is I2. So drop is 10 I2. This is voltage. No? What about this? Yes. This is 4 I2. Fine. Come here. Come here. Don't go in this. Sorry. Come here. Come here. And we have to end here. Our journey. So we will start from A. First I am getting 6 I1. Second I am getting 10 I2. Thirdly I am getting 4i2 okay friends and the uh, sign is negative sign come here and then at the end 20 plus 20 okay because we consider the direction which is ending for the independent source okay so here this is the equation i can resolve this equation for the minus 6i1 minus 14i2 plus 20 equal to 0 equation 1 now I am having only one equation and uh, I have to 
between two and two variables i1 and i2 so again i need another equation so see in the nodal analysis super node concept if dc voltage va dc voltage vb an independent sources source was coming there like 5 volts so we were taking va minus vb equal to 5 we were forming the equation from that particular super node here also will form the one will form one equation uh, from this super node c here the current is i1 coming from this direction and i2 is coming from this direction the resultant is 6 so this 6 is nothing but i2 minus i1 equal to 6 is it okay to you people why why the i2 minus y i1 why not i1 minus i2 because resultant current is the upward current so that's why i2 minus i2 I1. So our equation is minus I1 plus I2 equal to 6. Equation 2. Now I can easily solve for I1 and I2. Okay, is it clear? So if you solve I1 and I2, you will get uh, minus 3.2 ampere I1 value and 2.8 ampere I2. Is it okay? This is the super mass concept. Now I am going to take one gate example. See in the gate 2008 questions I am taking. The question was one ohm resistance connected with one volt independent source and uh, in parallel with one ampere current source like this the circuit was like this and the question was the current which current wait a minute here in the question they mentioned this this i and they asked the current I supplied by the DC voltage source in the circuit. The current I supplied by this DC voltage sources in the circuit. Okay. And they mentioned this current. Now you are going to apply the KCL suppose in this question. Okay. This is gate 2008. We are going to apply tell me KCL. So first identify the number of nodes, two nodes. One, two. Node A and this node by default ground. Okay. I assign voltage here VA. Is it okay to you people? Now see. Mm, Tell me, what is the value of VA given here, 1 volt? See, directly this 1 volt battery is connected to VA. Is it okay to you people? So, VA is nothing but given directly 1 volt. This is 1 volt R there. So, I have to apply the KCL over here. KCL add not A. Okay. An incoming current is I1, I, so this I as it is. This current is 1 divided by 1. Is it correct? 1 minus 0 divided by 1 ohm. And here also incoming current 1 ampere. So incoming current again negative sign equal to 0. 1 and 1 get cancelled and I equal to 0. This I is nothing but the 0 ampere. Okay. Very simple. Do you have any doubt in this? Why I am taking V equal to 1? Because V is given already. V is the voltage across 1 ohm or not? Tell me. So if you will apply KVL over here, so we are getting 1, positive 1. I came here, 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 minus VA, minus VA, 
here, here, here again, zero. V a equal to one. Sorry, V a equal to one. Okay. Is it clear? Good. This was gate two thousand eight concept. Okay. The same question we'll solve in the second unit by circuit theorems also. But this was the very basic. That's why I mentioned here. Okay. Now come. Now I'm taking another gate problem. Gate two thousand eleven. double problem the problem is this is 10 ohm resistance 10 ohm resistance 10 ampere current source and here 10 ohm resistance and current is given in this they mentioned already i and they are asking find out this i the question is find out the current over here this i1 this i current Okay, now again, see, let me change the pen, okay. So, the, your options are the one, 3 ampere, second, 6 ampere, third, 3.67, Fourth one is nine ampere. These are the options you have. So what you are going to do? Will you apply KVL or KCL? Any one you can apply. Either KCL or KVL. It's depend on you. But for the time being, I'll apply node analysis. See how many meshes are there in the circuit. See why I'll apply the node analysis. I'm telling you. How many nodes are there? Huh? Non-reference node. I'm asking. I'm not asking for the reference node. Non-reference node. How many? One only. Why? Because these all are same. These all are not different, different points. These are same. Why? Because they are connected with a simple circuit. There is a no element in between them. So, this is point A only. This also A. This also A. They are same in the circuit. I told you earlier. And one is this. This is the reference. This is the reference. This one is not known because I told you when resistance connected in series with battery, we consider one branch. Okay. How many meshes are there in the circuit? How many meshes? One, two, three. Three meshes are there. So if you will go by KVL, you will get three equations. Three unknown means three variables you have but if you solve this circuit by node analysis you will get only one equation so which is better tell me huh to solve by node analysis simple so I'll go for node analysis consider this volt VA is it okay I'm removing this A and okay friends VA. Now KCL at V, KCL at node A. Because node is A or which we assign the voltage VA. So VA, first see how many branches are connected on this single node. 1, 2, 3, 4. Right? So 4 terms will be there in one equation. First VA minus 10 volt minus 0 divided by 10. VA minus 10 minus 0 divided by 10. Come here. VA minus 0. This is the voltage difference. Divide by 10. Okay. This current is already outgoing current. Outgoing current. 
and the current value is 10 ampere okay correct now now the don't consider this i because this is the variable okay and i need the value of i only so i can write va minus 0 by 10 va minus 0 by 10 equal to 0 now see friends you are having only one equation and you are having only one unknown by this equation can we identify yeah we can lcm is 10 va minus 10 plus va plus 100 plus va equal to 0 any problem yet good so this is 1 2 3 3 va plus 90 equal to 0 is it okay so va is nothing but minus 30 it's minus 30 v is minus 30 now tell me the current i the current i is nothing but the direction of current is upper side means this will be higher potential and this will be at lower potential correct so what is the higher potential here in the circuit zero okay minus potential difference here the battery voltage is minus 30 you got now minus 30 minus 30 so minus minus 30 divide by the value 10 so it become 30 divided by 10 equal to 3 ampere the answer is 3 ampere where is the 3 ampere this is the option okay this was the one mark question In the year 2011 so see in the examination they are asking simple circuits simple questions okay anytime we can solve is it clear to you again I'm talking taking one more example get question only and your question is 1 100 ohm here 1 volt here 100 ohm 100 ohm 10 milliampere okay friends and the question was here they mention ix and the question was find ix it was the desk fluctuation in milliampere okay this was the question now again you can see it's very simple you can solve by node analysis again We'll assume this VA. Okay, let me change the color. VA. We'll write KCL. 8 node A. Is it okay? Tell me. VA minus 1 minus 0. Up to 0 only we have to go. Don't go like this again. Divide by 100. Is it okay? Now come again here. VA for this branch. Don't take this IX yet. We'll take it later. VA minus 0. Divide by 100. And here already current is coming, so no need to write this VA minus something something. The current is 10 milliamp. It's incoming current, and incoming current we consider negative. 
this is 10 million clear correct equal to 0 is it clear to you now come take lcm over here va minus 1 plus va minus equal to 0 i think it's clear to you va va 2 va minus 1 here also it is minus 1 okay and 0 so va equal to 1 volt v equal to 1 volt now can we easily get the current ix yes we can get ix is nothing but va minus 0 divided by 100 VA minus 0 divided by 100. VA is 1 volt minus 0 divided by 100. So the current is 0 0.00. 0, 0. Sorry. The current is 0. 0.0. Okay. So this is the dash fill up question. So some students will directly do. Sorry. Okay, point zero 0.01 is the answer. So some, some students will do an examination, they will feel point zero 0.01. That's it. Okay, if you do like this, you'll get lose your marks. One marks. Not only one marks, point five three point three three negative marking also. Okay, because see, please observe this carefully. We are asking in milliampere. You are... Uh, you are giving the answer in ampere only. So convert it in milliampere. This is 10 milliampere. So in the box you have to write 10 ampere. Milliampere is the unit because they are asking milliampere. Okay. So this is the questions based on nodal analysis. Very simple question. Now come to the next. Uh, we are having some problems. These are homework to you people. I'll again do this for you. I note I have to calculate. I'll mention VA over here. Okay, I'll write KVL nodal analysis at VA. So VA minus 10 up to ground I have to go minus 0 divided by atom plus VA minus 0 divided by 3. VA by 3 directly I'm taking here VA minus 0 by 6 is equal to 0 only one unknown that is VA take LCM 24 8 3 is a so 3 VA minus 30 plus 3 3 8 is a 8 VA plus 6 24 4 VA equal to 0 is it okay 3 VA 8 VA 4 VA how much ah, 3 uh, 8, 4, 12 plus 3, 15 VA is equal to 30. So, V equal to 2 volt. V equal to 2 volt. Once we get the V equal to 2 volt, can we get the value of I naught? Yes. I naught is nothing but direction is same. 10 minus 2, 10 minus 2 divided by 8. 8 by 8 is nothing but 1 ampere. Simple. So, answer is I naught is now this is the homework to you and I think last time we unsolved one question I have to give you the answers for that wait a minute the value of V2 is nothing but 9.2 and V3 is 4.2 ok volt now come to the Come to the problem number 4. Find the R equivalent and I0. Where is the I0? Here is the I0. Where is the R equivalent? R equivalent of this circuit. Means you are getting the R equivalent up to here this point. A and B they are asking. Okay. So as I told you how to find the R equivalent. We will start the circuit to analyze from the class portion of the circuit. Okay, hand portion of the circuit. Say, the 60 is connected with 80 in series parallel. No, no series, no parallel. Then, 
then this 60 is connected with this 12 ohm in series parallel there is a no nothing no parallel nothing but this 12 and this 6 they are connected in parallel yes starting and ending points both are same for this 12 and 6 so this 12 and 6 are connected in parallel so the resultant for this is nothing but 12 into 6 divided by 12 plus 6 12 into 6 divided by 18 6 3 is a 3 4 is a. so the resultant of this 2 is 4 so your circuit will become like 4 connected with 20 this is your 80 and here you are having 60 am I right like this you are you are having the circuit like this here you are having 15 and this is the points A and B across which you are finding R equivalent any problem now see this 80 and this 20 they are connected in parallel this is the starting point this is the ending point 20 and 80 they are connected in parallel so the combination is 20 into 80 20 plus 80 uh, so it's 100 12 5 yeah 100 5 1 and 5 6 16 this is the 16 so I can replace this this two combination uh, of uh, 80 and 20 by 16 correct first I'll erase and the resultant of 20 and 80 is nothing but 16 is it okay now see the 16 and 4 they are connected in series so resultant of these two will become 20 am I correct the resultant become 20 so I'm replacing that branch by 20 now see this 20 and this 6 this 60 these two are connected in parallel see ending and starting again the resultant 20 into 60 divided by 20 plus 60 means 18 4 15 so this is nothing but the 15 I can replace the whole this parallel combination of 20 and 16 by 15 don't have this okay I can replace it by 15 okay now 15 and 15 you are having in parallel again so the combination of 15 into 15 divided by 15 plus 15 30 is a 15 divided by 2 7.5 so the resultant of this circuit is 7.5 so the new circuit you have is you are having 3.5 okay fine you are having 2.5 here the resultant is or R equivalent is 7.5 okay now they are asking find out this current I naught so I naught is 3.5 divided by 2.5 plus 7.5 okay so 3.5 divided by 10 is nothing but 0.35 ampere okay this is as simple as that fine now we already discussed about the circuit ground and voltage reference to ground while studying the uh, node while applying the node analysis we assume that one voltage will be a reference node reference node means the voltage of that particular node will be zero and why uh, we are taking this reference node in consideration because any measurement here measurement of current or voltage in the circuit will be with the reference to the reference node only now come to the voltage division and current division circuit okay see friends the voltage division will be in series circuits only and we'll see the current division in parallel circuits okay here this series circuit is given 
why this is the series circuit because all elements are connected in the series combination okay so you can see the r1 r2 r3 r4 up to rn these all resistive elements are connected in series combination and one independent source is applied to the circuit if you'll connect the various elements in series combination the current will flow in the circuit and that current will be same for all this i will flow in the circuit and the same current will flow in r1 same will flow in r2 and same will flow in the rn so in the series circuit the current is same is it okay for the series circuit the current is same for all but what about voltage what about the voltage the voltage drop across r1 see r1 and voltage drop across r2 are they same they are different depend on the value of resistances because v is nothing but r into i here the, if this r is suppose 2 ohm and the current is fixed for all 5 ampere i'm taking so here the voltage drop will be 10 okay but suppose the value of r2 is 3 current is fixed 5 so value of the voltage drop will be 15 so see the value of voltages are different for different elements or, or different resistive elements okay so in the series circuit the voltage divides so according to the voltage division rules or voltage dividers formula we can easily find out the value of a voltage at particular particular element see suppose r1 r2 r3 up to rn uh, resistive elements are connected in series so i'm getting v1 v2 v3 up to vn voltages across the elements so suppose i have to find out the what is the vn my task is to find out the value of vn the voltage across the resistive element rn so directly according to the voltage division rule this voltage vn is nothing but the source voltage source voltage means whatever you apply this one this is the source voltage source voltage multiply with corresponding resistance means the resistance across which you want to calculate the voltage value so vn you are calculating for the rn so multiply the source voltage with rn divide by summation of series combination of all the elements r1 r2 this 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 up to rn like this simple is it okay to you people suppose someone someone is asking that what is the value of v2 v2 means the voltage drop across r2 simply v2 is nothing but the source voltage means the applied voltage input voltage multiply with r2 simply because you are going to calculate the voltage drop across r2 so the source voltage are multiply with r2 and divide by r1 plus r2 plus all elements existing in the circuit series combination of the circuit simple this is the voltage division rule i hope it's clear to you people okay now come to the come to the current divider I told you earlier that current will be divided in the parallel circuit. See, obviously, this is the source current you applied. Correct. The source current I is coming here at, at the point A. I is coming. Now, at this point, we are having two paths. Okay, current will say, uh, for the current, I am having two paths. This one and this one. So, obviously, the current will be divided according to, according to the values of particular ele elements okay so in the parallel circuit the current will divide but what about the voltage voltage will be same for all elements how see these are two elements a points a and b between a and b i'm having three elements r1 r2 r3 three elements i have like this okay and these elements these three elements are connected with independent source e 
so this e will be same for all why because they are connected in parallel this e is given for the terminal a and b is it okay this e is given for the terminal a and b and r1 r2 r3 all these three elements are connected across a and b and parallel only so that's why this e is same for all but suppose you are having current here from the source source current after coming to a the current will divide in three parts here will go i1 here will go i2 here will be i3 so how will going to calculate this current see it's also a simple rule like a voltage division rule i s is coming now this i is divided into two parts i1 and i2 now if you are going to calculate i1 i1 so you have to multiply the source current there in the voltage division rule we use the source voltage here we are using the source current because current is here okay in division i'll take r1 r2 but here i'll not multiply this i1 is nothing but the current going into the r1 but instead of r1 here we'll take the opposite branch resistance means r2 is it okay to you people see this is the current division rule suppose you are going to calculate the value of i2 i2 is the current flowing in the r2 so you will take the source current you will multiply this source current not by r2 but the opposite branch resistance means r1 divide by summation r1 plus r2 like this is it okay this is the current division rule okay now come to the problem given here they are saying for the circuit shown in the figure calculate v out where is the v out here v out is given across r2 is it okay to you people now see everything is given the first condition is ignoring the terminal resistance rs we have to ignore this rs of the source e and use the voltage division simply they are saying voltage division so tell me the v out v out will be the source voltage what is the source voltage 100 okay fine next multiply with the same resistance across which you want to calculate the voltage 60 divide by summation of the resistances 60 plus 100 simply you are having into 60 divide by 160 is it okay 0 0 will get cancel 2 3 za 2 at za and uh, it's like 200 by 8 again you can simplify it okay so this is the value of v not now this is for you people this is homework okay here we'll consider the rs so friends this is all about this lecture in the next lecture we'll meet again with new type of concepts and new type of problems okay till then take care and bye